We are here with Ignis Kid. I'm the one, Jame. We are here to uh, rate whether Magic the Gathering cards are good or not. And how much Magic experience do you have, Ignis Kid? I have none, unless you count the fact that Black Lotus is valuable. Um, Wizard of the Coast messed up on their anniversary stuffs. And yeah, what I'll be probably taking away from this entire video. <laughs> so basically everything that's mainstream is the only things that you know. <laughs> yeah, probably, yeah. I'm going to give you five cards today, and you're going to tell me whether they are good or bad. There is pretty much no in-between on these cards, and they're either play playable or they're not. So let's go ahead and get started with the first card, and it is... Pack Rat. Okay, great. So it has a one skull. I'll just mark that as undead. Uh, it is a creature. It is a rat. Figures. No uh, Yu-Gi-Oh shenanigans of it obviously being a fish, but it's a sea dragon. <laughs> so uh, it has two stars as the values of what the attack point would, at, or I assume attack and defense would be for attack and life. Um, Ratback's power and toughness, uh, as some attack and defense, are each equal to the number of rats you control. Uh, for the cost of two regulars, and well, I think there was two neutrals and one doom, or undead, discard a card, put a token onto the battlefield that's a copy of Packrat. So earlier, uh, you were telling me there is flooding strategy, so you fill up your board with a bunch of bullshit. You oh. can, yes. Uh, okay, good. With a bunch of bullshit. This right here screams like cheap. Uh, I don't know if there's uh, tribute uh, effects associated with magic, but uh, cheap access to fodder. It's like, I need a bunch of dudes, and I need them now. So, um, what's a little, like, icon to the right on the text box for Creature Rat? Um, that is the set symbol. Which is, uh, here I assume, irrelevant. Um, yeah, it's irrelevant. Okay. So... Is there a limit to how many monsters you can summon a turn? I assume yes. There is because not. There's not a limit of how many there is not? how okay. many creatures you can put in play at one at one time or during a whole turn. Mm -hmm. There's okay. no limit. Um, how accessible is mana as a resource? Like, do you have to build up to it over the course of three, four turns, or do you have to, or immediately start out with like I don't know, I've got twenty of them. You start out with zero. And you have to draw, okay. and you start with the opening hand of seven cards, and mm -hmm. you have to draw your lands and and your spells. So everything's a spell that's not a land. Uh, you, you have to draw all your mm -hmm. lands, and each land you play is kind of like a normal summon. You only get one per turn. But there are okay. there are other cards that say that you can play more than one land per turn. Kind of like you can get more than one normal summon per turn from from a deck like Floundries mm -hmm. or something. But yep. um, those are kind of few and far between, and they're pretty niche, but mm -hmm. they're still playable. But in general, you can only get one, you can only play one land from your hand onto your board per turn. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then I assume you can only access the resources of said lands once a turn. Yes, once they're tapped, unless a card says otherwise that you can untap them or something, they stay tapped. Yes. Okay, so having no frame of reference of what the power level of turn i assume three and later cards is when you actually get into the resource loop of oh hey uh, i've got a decently accessible uh, mana stack compared to my opponent i can now waste a normal and an undead mana on this pack rat and then again dump three more into its ability to put more rat tokens on the field so from just uh, they in Yu-Gi-Oh, this would be unplayable. <laughs> so if uh, no, well, not unplayable, but it would waste your normal summon. But you get a token, you can link it off into any link to, which is Yu-Gi-Oh's most broken card ever, and you can't, you can't tell me otherwise. So I would pivot to this card is bad because, as you mentioned, you have to draw a specific land for this. You have to waste your early game resources into this card, and I don't know how I don't know how many rats there are. Uh, if there are, uh, there are other rats that are better, that is worth to just uh, put pack rat up as some sort of grandmaju. 
to just like, hey, uh, look at all these rats, and here's the big one, then it would be good. But not knowing the pool that uh, you're working with and building a rat stack, all, and also considering that you have to go all in in this strategy, like I'm, I'm looking at this like as the core card to build around, and historically rat decks are usually just like more flood. So if you've got like decent amount of flooding with it, I can see where it's playable. But you said something earlier about uh, it being niche to activate more than one land a turn. So a niche card is good if applied in a good deck. Two niche cards in the same deck, eh, right. you're struggling there. So odd pivot to this card is not good. Unless it has something pretty impressive to back it up. Final answer. Yep. Final answer. Okay, so your 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 basically argument of this being not good is that um, you pay two mana, one and a black to play this card mm -hmm. on your turn. So for basically no value because it has yes. no stats. For no value. It will be just a 1-1 one, one because itself is a rat. Yeah. And then... Basically, unless you play a bunch of lands, you're only going to be able to activate this card like once a turn or something. And then that yep. is um, at this at the price of discard area card, the value you're getting out of making more rats is not worth the amount of mana that you have to pay. No, unless there's some crazy graveyard setup. No. Okay. Um, this card is good. Oh, okay. Yes, um, because you don't necessarily need to put it in a deck full of rats because each mm -hmm. rat fuels itself each rat oh, is another okay. rat so this is mm -hmm. a might be a one one but the next turn you play a land for your land for turn you only get one of mm -hmm. and then you pass your turn and then on your opponent's mm -hmm. end step or whenever it's relevant you can pay three mana and discard a card and then make another rat so basically every oh, card in your yeah. hand makes a rat every single turn and each mm -hmm. rat is a copy of pack, pack rat, which means that your pack rat's now a two two, but now it's a three three. But Ooh. not not it's not a three three. They're all copies of pack rat, so they're all three threes. Mm -hmm. And then they become all four fours, and then all five fives. So it's kind of like an, a one card engine that can get out of control all by itself. Yeah, I see. Unless your opponent immediately has an, uh, an answer to it, it's basically free to roll. Right, and if they do have an answer to mm -hmm. it, you can use the ability in response. To make another mm. copy of Pack Rat, and now it's not just a rat, it's another Pack Rat. So your opponent has oh. to have two answers. Yeah, so... Yeah, I see how can, how that can get out of control. Yes. So it, it was a, a staple. It, it's, it's rotated out of standard now, um, but mm -hmm. and it is a little bit power crept in like super old formats, where they have like a, an infinite, like a freaking infinite card pool. But... Mm -hmm. Uh, when it was in standard and for a, a period of time in modern, which was which is a, a a format with a larger card pool similar to Yu-Gi-Oh, um, mm -hmm. it was good in those formats when it was in those formats. Okay, yeah, makes sense. So in general, it is a good card. So let's go ahead right. and move on to the next card. There, there's gonna be there's gonna be some Magic fans in in here like, don't say my pack <laughs> rat is bad. <laughs> like. It's my pack rat. I apologize I love to pack all rat. the pack rat enjoyers. <laughs> there's so yeah, there's so many people that love pack rat. Um, I love pack rat myself as well. Uh, so let's go ahead and go okay, on to the next okay. card. I've learned to respect the rat. Let's respect the rat. All right, this next card was will would kind of it's gonna. Ooh. I give you this card on purpose because it's gonna kind of mm -hmm. get your Yu-Gi-Oh juices flowing and see a completely different side of magic than pack rat. Omniscience. Hefty price of 10. Alright, it's an enchantment. Okay, so that's the thing that you can also activate. So you may cast spells from your hand without paying their mana cost. Ah. Sweet rapid activations, how I've missed you. Okay. Uh, the things that ones that matter. Okay, no, that's flavor text. Okay, um. Now. I love the concept of this. If you're playing something that's um, spell-heavy, I don't know if there are archetypes there. The spells is uh, any, any non-land card in Magic. Okay, any non-land card. Oh god. Um, including, inclu including monsters slash creatures. Yeah. 
How many ways to get rid of your opponent's enchantments are there? There, there are a lot, but they're more of like side deck mm -hmm. options. Like if your opponent's okay. playing a lot of artifacts and enchantments, you just sideboard in your artifact and enchantment hate. Is there a way to prevent that that hate? Because for the amount of money, uh, money amount of mana that you're paying here, uh, the effect obviously is really really worth it. But if you're playing this and you have no follow up to protect, uh, protect, it's like, oh hey, here take a substantial amount of my resources, and your opponent goes like, no, without pretty much a big drawback. It's, instead of okay, I'm paying like almost the same amount of mana as you do, probably less to get rid of your enchantment. Is there any way to prevent this? Uh, is there a way to prevent your omniscience from leaving the battlefield once it's once it's on the battlefield? Yes, there are ways to prevent yes. that. Um, Mm. As you see that there's the three blue symbols on top of Omniscience in the top right? Yeah. The blue is, the, there's different colors of mana, and the, the colors of mana have their own archetypal synergies mm -hmm. attached to them. There's white, blue, black, red, yep. and green. White usually is, has a lot of um, banish removal, and they go, mm -hmm. they go wide with a lot of, they play like a lot of itty-bitty creatures and try to get in for damage, mm -hmm. usually in white. Um, in, yeah. <clears throat> and white usually has some number of enchantment removal, but not a ton of artifact mm -hmm. removal. An artifact is a different kind of permanent. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. uh, blue is, has a lot of cards that let you dig deeper into your deck, like an upstart goblin. Mm -hmm. And it has a yep. lot, and it has a lot of, uh, a lot of cards that counter your opponent's spells. So it has a lot of like negates. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so um, it allows you to churn through your churn through your deck and 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 stop your opponent. Usually in blue, um, black yep. is like you see in Pack Rat. Um, usually mm -hmm. has cards that um, do powerful effects for a cost. Like Pack Rat has to discard a card. Mm -hmm. Mo a lot yep. of black cards and the theme of black is you pay like a like you pay life or discard a card or banish things that you yep. that are in your graveyard or bring um, to gain an additional really good effect. Mm -hmm. It also black also has a lot of graveyard recursion to add cards back to your hand from the graveyard mm -hmm. or play things from your graveyard. That's kind of a theme for black. So it's zombies in Yu-Gi-Oh. What was that? So it's like zombies in Yu-Gi-Oh. Yes, there are black zombies in magic. Yeah. Uh, and and there's skeletons and all the whole nine yards. Um, mm -hmm. red is the uh, is the aggressive color. Uh it mm -hmm. so it's looking to kill your opponent as fast as possible most of the time and has a lot of it has a, and it is also a little bit chaotic. Like, you, you, mm -hmm. you banish the top cards of your deck to be able to play them until the end of your next turn, so you're not actually drawing them, but you, okay. but you're, you get resources by banishing your cards. Uh, and it also has a lot of cards that burn your opponent, like, uh, mm -hmm. like, uh, um, like the, <laughs> the cannon card, or whatever it's called in Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, the card that got banned, Wave Motion. Yep. Uh, so, uh, wave Motion. Yeah, mm -hmm. it has kind of, kind of cards like Wave Motion Cannon that kind of kill your opponent over time, but it also has cards that, that like Ukazi, like deal 800 to your opponent, but, it does, but it's a mm -hmm. lot more damage than 800. And magic starts at 20 life, so red, car red cards kind of say, deal 3 damage, deal 4 damage, deal 2 damage to okay. your opponent with an upside. Uh, and mm -hmm. it has a lot of creatures that are very cheap, very cheap creatures to cast, like 1 mana, 2 mana, 3 mana, but are very aggressive mm -hmm. and want to kill your opponent as fast as possible. And then the last color, yep. green, is all about mana, all about ramping. All, and and mm -hmm. also, all, ramping is playing more than one mana per turn or getting, ma getting lands yep. out of your deck and putting them into play. Uh, it's all about okay. wanting to gain the upper hand with your mana. And also, it has yep. the ability, green is the master <laughs> of, of playing mm -hmm. huge creatures. Creatures, unlike Pack Rat, mm -hmm. that's a 1-1 one, one or whatever. Uh, green yep. has the like six sixes and freaking twelve twelves and ten tens, so it has like oh, the no. huge monsters. It has huge dinosaurs and huge, mm -hmm. um, you know, and and uh, huge big tree folk and things like that. And that that's what that's what green does and tries to kill your opponent that way. <laughs> um, so yeah. with with that being said, because omniscience is a blue card, and unless you catch your spells mm -hmm. from hand without paying their mana costs. And maybe and and yep. the color green also has a lot of artifact and enchantment removal. But if you're playing against a white deck mm -hmm. that has enchantment removal, or you're playing against a, a deck that they have green mana and they might have enchantment removal, you're yep. the deck that plays cards that negate their card. Your blue okay. does have the the counter spell. And the effect is immediately in action at the moment it hits the field, right? So if your opponent would to, to be activated, I don't know if magic has something like chains. 
uh, to activate something to destroy the enchantment, it is already active. So the effect is immediately applied on hit. Yes, this is a continuous effect. Okay, so if I activate this, and uh, my opponent goes no, and I just hit them with a no button blue. Okay. If you there is something called the stack, which is also similar to a chain, yeah. but it's not. Mm -hmm. In Yu-Gi-Oh, the chain resolves resolves backwards, right? But once yeah. you once you start resolving the chain, the whole chain happens. That's yes. not the case in magic. Once you start mm -hmm. resolving the chain, you can let something resolve and then add to the chain in the middle of the chain. Oh damn. Which is absolutely broken. There, it, yeah, it is absolutely broken. So omniscience goes on the chain. In magic, it's called going on the stack. So it's not, mm -hmm. it's not on the field yet when it's on the stack. Mm -hmm. So if your opponent goes to yes. counter your omniscience, it's on the stack not, and it's not on the field. So your card, your card, okay, you have, to have so an additional card in your hand to stop to... their card and have it yeah. more than 10 mana, basically. Mm -hmm. To stop their card. So you'd ha you would have to plan for that. You do have to plan for it. Um, but that's only, that's yeah, only okay. if your opponent uh, is playing blue, right? Because if they're, if they're not playing yeah. blue mana, you know they probably can't counter it. Yeah. No, then I would say it is pretty damn good. Like, if you're playing the mana color of I will protect this at any co at any cost because I assume, aside from countering, it's also the region focused most on getting the biggest value out of their spells at an up cost to essentially get a free pass of the cost of your spells, that's pretty broken. If you if you manage to get this to stick and you have a way to constantly secure yourself against any possible interaction with this while also resolving the rest of your game plan, this is busted. But if you're in a game if you reached the game state too late, then it's essentially a brick for the entirety of the game. Correct. I would say it's a pretty good card. It is a win condition. Um, yes, it's not a win condition by itself, because you do need other cards with it. You yep. can't just cast this card and win the game. You do need more cards mm -hmm. in your hand. But, yes, this, oh, this card is good. So you got, you got that one correct. Okay, great. Um, usually mm -hmm. the, way in, the way in which decks play this card is either, re either reanimating it from the graveyard, playing it, is okay. putting this in the graveyard and then bringing it back, because it costs 10 mana, so you want to basically cheat it out, right? Yeah, um, get it for cheap. Yeah, right. Um, or you want to cast it with, by using some sort of like green mechanic to put a whole mm -hmm. bunch of lands in play and then faster than your opponent and then play this. If you're just playing one land per yeah. turn for 10 turns in a row and then casting this card, your, your opponent's probably going to kill you first before you get to do that, mm -hmm. right? And, and as you said, it will be dead in your hand the whole game. But there's decks in Magic that do take advantage of being able to play this faster faster than normal, like mm -hmm. with a card like Lotus Field, which is a land that taps for three, okay. a land that taps for three mana. Oh. So there, there are ways that you can cheat this out, and those mm -hmm. decks that can do that, and the strategy to do that are very good, and there's even a deck mm -hmm. in, a, in, a, in a format called Pioneer that okay. this card is the cornerstone, one of the cornerstones of the deck, and it is a tier one strategy. So, okay. it is a good card. Even tier one. Damn. So, yep. Yeah. All right, good job. So the Yu-Gi-Oh! game mechanics are still superior. <laughs> <laughs> Turns no. out not, ca not paying mana to cast your spells is pretty good. And like I said, black, the color Ooh. of black does things at a, at a cost to do some kind of effect. So this a, card yeah. is no different. So go ahead and read this one. Okay, this is Grief. Probably what most of the Magic players feel like looking at me, <laughs> attempting to raid these cards, or as or off the pack rack. So uh, it costs four mana, two normal, two black. Uh, it's a creature and an elemental incarnation. So, and it's a menace apparently. So, menace. When grief enters the battlefield, target opponent reveals their hand. You choose a non-land card from it, that player discards that card. And evoke, exile a black card from your hand. So evoke just means, if you use this, pay this. If you, yes, you have to exile a black card from your hand mm -hmm. to evoke this creature. What the evoke mechanic says is, mm -hmm. when this creature enters the battlefield, if it was evoked, sacrifice it immediately. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. So you don't get... 
to have the three two creature in play if you evoke this. But I see. but the caveat is the evoke cost. What it says there, exile a black card from your hand, is the entire mm -hmm. cost. Oh, okay. Not the mana. And you do not pay oh, mana. Oh, okay. So you do not pay mana. That makes this way better. A what menace? Have... What menace means? Sorry, real quick. What menace mm -hmm. means is that we we went over a little bit a little bit before the show started that if you attack mm -hmm. with a creature, you can your opponent can block with one of their creatures. What menace yes. means is your opponent cannot block with one creature. They have to block with two or more creatures. Oh, okay. It's a menace. Yep. <laughs> okay. So with, with that said, with that knowledge, Ooh. how good do you think this card is? Or how bad do you think this card is? Okay. Um, I can see the value of it if you summon it as is in, uh, without using the evoke, because evoke would just uh, hit the field, die. And... Without the evoke, I think it's already solid because at turn four, well, I assume this will be viable turn four, um, you'd be getting a three two, a that forces your opponent to block with two or more. Plus, also, uh, you can just ditch something that could counter this from your opponent's hand. Obviously, unless they have an answer to it, which is. Basically, you give in a nutshell. So, from face value, this place looks good. This looks like a good tech card. Unless you probably face a deck that is reliant on graveyard setup, and then you'd be just doing them a solid. But, alone, the stats and the possibility of just... I assume there's like some exile recursion, like there's uh, good... Example of this is, is Fluandries, like, just get stuff back from your vanish pile, which is what I assume Exile is. And, yeah, I'd say this is pretty solid. One thing I do I have to it's... mention, that mm -hmm. there... I'm not going to say... There are, like, a couple exceptions that basically mm -hmm. aren't good enough to exist in the game. But yeah. usually in Magic, once something is exiled, you cannot get it back. There is not good... There's okay. not good you magic. Get it back. This makes it a tiny bit worse. But in a top deck war, and I don't know how important hand knowledge is in magic as it is in Yu-Gi-Oh! Because Yu-Gi-Oh! is high speed everything. Uh, the moment you get hit with something unexpected, uh, you're basically out of it. Then this is still a pretty solid card, even now for the heavy cost of an exile of your hand. Because having a tech of just, oh, hey, uh, you have two cards in your hand. Um, you're probably setting up for something big. Uh, let me just hit you with banish one, keep my mana open for something else, let it hit the field, activate its effect, it goes, and you lose a card for this. It's like, I banish one, you discard one. This is pretty solid. I would say... I would say this is pretty good. Um, yes, you are correct. This card is not just pretty good. It is very good. Oh, okay. It is meta-defining good. Really? Yes. This is okay. one of the best, if not the best card in an entire format. Oh, damn. Yes. Um, there are different colors of these elemental incarnations, and they all evoke themselves mm -hmm. by banishing a card with the same color from your hand. This one just happens yep. to look at your opponent's hand. But what you would do with this mm -hmm. card is you would play a black mana, untapped, mm -hmm. and then you would evoke this by exiling a black card from your hand, playing on the field. Mm -hmm. The trigger to e the evoke trigger to sacrifice it is on the stack, but also the discard mm -hmm. a card is on the stack. And but mind you, this is turn one of the game. Yes. So you get to see your opponent's hand, and, and like I said, mm -hmm. how the chain works. The, the, the stack, you can add onto it the in between. Stack, yeah. So you can, mm -hmm. let the, you can let the discard trigger resolve, look at your opponent's hand, discard mm -hmm. a card, and then there are black cards that save your cards from dying. Oh. Yes. So there's, there's a card called Undying Malice, there's a card called Undying mm -hmm. Evil, there's a, card, there's a bunch of cards 
that <laughs> let you target your card for one mana to say, if this would die, bring it back to the battlefield instead. Or, or when it dies, bring it back to the battlefield. Now I see how this would be format defining. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I know you didn't have the because context of that. Because it was also going to menace 3-2. Yeah. yeah. I know you didn't have the context of that, but what you would do is you wait for the discard to resolve, discard the card that matters, mm -hmm. and then you get to play the one mana card to bring this card back out of the graveyard, to, and it triggers again to take another yep. card out of your opponent's hand, and it's not evoked anymore, so it stays on the battlefield. Yeah, no, this busted. Do you know what this <laughs> reminds me of a bit? Um, how familiar are you with Dark World? Dark World? Oh yeah, I'm familiar. Yeah. Okay, uh, it, it reminds me a bit of Silva. Yes, it is, it is like Silva if you could, if you mm -hmm. had a card that guaranteed that you could use the other ability. Yeah. Your opponent discarded Which it. is basically the, uh, the other, uh, I, I always call it the, the tiny Dark World. Uh, I'd, I'd have to look it up, but there, there is a Dark World that if you discard it, you summon it to your opponent's field and you force your opponent to make you discard a card of your choice. Yes, that's Cerulee. Yeah, so really, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it is, it's basically all that set up, but even cheaper. Yes, it's even cheaper. It's zero mana, um, no investment besides a black card in your hand. So yes, this card is format defining, warping, and broken. Right, I'm gonna give you a little bit of half point in that because I heard somewhere in there you say that it was a tech card. So I'm gonna give you a half point on that one. Yeah. <laughs> Fair. Let's, yeah. let's go ahead and go to the second to last card, and this right. is an art. This is an artifact. So, like an enchantment, mm -hmm. it does stay on the battlefield, but usually artifacts have other activated mm -hmm. abilities, and you will read this one here. Yeah. So it's like the difference between a continuous trap and spell. Yes. Okay. Or, or it's like the difference between like a continuous spell and trap and a field spell. It's like, it's a, it's a, it's a okay. permanent that stays on the battlefield, but it's just a different type. I see. Okay. Uh, Goblin... You're testing my vocals here. Uh, Goblin Karbelche. Oh, uh, are you German? I assume that's how I say. I am Swiss. Oh, Swiss. Okay. Uh, uh, <laughs> in America, we call it Charbelcher. Okay. Uh, yeah, I would, I would call it Charbelcher. But uh, that's the I, I actually love that pronunciation. Keep doing that. Oh, thank you. So, Gobin Karbelcher. Uh, it's an artifact. Ooh, that's a really cool set I can note to self. Um, four neutrals, okay. And pay three... And what's the arrow? Tap it. Oh, tap it, okay. Um, reveal cards from the top of your library, as in this deck, until you reveal a land card. Robin Kalbach deals damage equal to the number of non-land cards revealed this way to the target creature or player, okay? If the revealed land was a mountain, Goblin Kalbach deals double the damage instead. Put the revealed cards on the bottom of your library in any order, so you don't even lose them to the graveyard. Hmm. What's the amount of stacking you can do in, in Magic? What do you mean? Um, something like the effect of... Uh, what's his name? Uh, Pot of Duality is an obvious, just a reveal... Oh, and then okay. add back in you're, any order. You're saying like how how many how much like excavating there is or or manipulating yes. the top of cards of your deck? Yeah. Um not much. Not much. Okay. Uh this makes it automatically a bit worse because it's way more RNG. Now being able to Im immediately target the opposing player instead of just a creature and just deal at least one or if you whiff then okay hey cool uh, you got to reveal land um hmm for four neutral and then the three again to so essentially seven mana to use this but it stays there so you can essentially just use it as a you know what i've got excess resources let me hit you with the kapelche um, hmm. I am very much on the fence on this for two reasons. One is you have to reveal the top cards of your deck, which doesn't sound like a big deal, but I assume Magic has staples, as Yu-Gi-Oh does, and cards that you generally prefer to have in your hand, except this forces them essentially back to the bottom of the deck. 
So if you only play one uh, mountain land and it's at the bottom of your deck, you target the opposing player, you reveal everything until the mountain land. It would be very funny. Yes. I, I, will, I will just say that. That would be hilarious. But the odds of that happening, minuscule. In a blue matchup, they'd probably blast this out of the game immediately when you try to activate it. They would have access uh, oh, to activating? counter. They would. Ha they would have cards that can have access to countering this, to negate, to yeah. having a negate for this, for this activation or the ability. Yeah. Yeah, which makes this a more risky card to play. Um, if the whole premise of red, which I assume this is played in, is RNG, which admittedly I'm a big fan of, because I guess I play Speedroid. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's like. Speedroid wheel prime example, roll dice. Like where else do you think you can play for dice? Um, yes, red red does have some dice cards for Okay. I am inclined to say this is good for the purpose it aims to achieve, which is force a response out of your opponent. Especially if you attacked. Uh is there a main phase two in magic, right? There is a main phase two. So Okay, uh, and then you just use this to finish off anything. And if you're already playing stuff with mountains in it, then the odds are slightly raised of you just... Oh yeah, activate this. One, two, three, mountain. Oh cool, uh, six into that, onto that minion specifically. He looked at me funny. Hmm. So I would be inclined to say that this is good in a matchup where you know your opponent doesn't have many answers. Or going first, or like the first game, because you said there are there are, there is artifact hate in sideboards. There are. If your opponent knows you're on this, and your whole strategy is just like uh, run into my opponent's stuff and my opponent specifically, to gen just in the end cheese out the last few uh, hit points with going Gabacher, then it is good. But going game two, game three, when you know your opponent has active hate for this card, or any other artifact you might play then its value is probably to the point of I'm boarding it out. So in that case, you're using this as kind of like an ag aggressive strategy and using this as like your top-end finisher in your aggressive strategy is what you're saying? Yes. So as, as like as a backup. So it's like, oh no, my opponent only has uh, two health left and I know he's going to kill me on the next turn. Well, guess what? Okay. It's time to roll the dice. Uh, it's time to roll the dice. Nice. Okay. So, whereas it would be cool if this card would be in a deck like that, this card is good, but it is in a mm -hmm. completely different way than what you're saying. Okay. Um, there like are me. there is a deck, and you just call mm -hmm. it Goblin Char Belcher or Belcher, or mm -hmm. you call it Oops All Spells. And this is kind of a trick. <laughs> Charbelch was kind of like a trick question, like a mean, like a mean card to give you, because it is a mm -hmm. very niche deck, and you only play you play zero lands. In the deck. Okay. You you only play lands that are also spells. There's something called flip cards. I feel so bad that the Magic players are going to flame me for giving you this card, but um, no, it's all right. I'm, I'm going to be flamed in the comments for even giving you this card. Because it, it are you telling uh, me this is hein hein? To, to to a new to a new player, <laughs> it's impossible to know whether a land is a land or if is a land is also a spell. There's a kind mm -hmm. of pendulum card in in Magic called oh, no. it called a a like modal double faced card. It's called MDFC. Okay, where it's a mm -hmm. land on one side and it's a spell on the other side. The MDFC just sounds to me like like some amateur boxing ring. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's a land on one side, spell on the other side. So on the top mm -hmm. side of it, it's a spell, but you can flip it over and play it as a land, if you want to. Oh. So since okay, the top since the top side of it is a spell, um, mm -hmm. it's considered a spell in your deck and not a land. Mm -hmm. But when you draw these spells, oh, yeah. you can play them as lands. So what you would do mm -hmm. is you play four lands in a row, but they're really bad lands that there are modal double face mm -hmm. cards, and then you get to four mana, and then you play a card called Iron Crag Feet which is mm -hmm. a four mana card that says add seven mana to your mana pool and then you oh. can only cast one more spell this turn. Uh, there's, there's a couple other ways to do this, I but Iron Crag Feet is the easiest one to explain. 
Um, you add seven yep. mana, and then you play Charbelcher, and then immediately you can use that three mana to use the ability, since that's not considered casting a spell. And you have, and then you have no lands uh -oh. in your deck, so you you reveal your entire deck, and your opponent takes X damage, where X is the number of cards in your deck. Or well, spell, oh, gosh. Uh, where X is the number of non-land cards in your deck, which is usually like around, you know, 30 or 40, since every magic deck has 60 cards in it. Yeah. So you're telling me this is uh, pre Arata Dark Strike Fighter? Um, yes. <laughs> you 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 basically just you just play this card and your opponent loses. Oh no. Yes, it, it's kind of like a it's a one card combo. Sounds like it sounds pretty good to me. So <laughs> there's no way of you knowing that there's modal double face cards mm -hmm. and 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 lands that you can play in their deck that's not actually considered lands in your deck. For you yep. to know this at all, I just wanted to see what you how you would evaluate Goblin Charbelcher and if you. If that if that thought even crossed your mind, so it was a cool thought experiment. No, it didn't. But it did, I, yeah. I didn't expect pendulums to even haunt magic. <laughs> no, I am not, so sorry for you. They're not even close to pendulums, but I related it to pendulums because they're okay, they're good. basically two different sides of the card. Yeah. So anyway, you got that one right for a different reason, but it was fun nonetheless. Let's go ahead and go on to the last card. This one is pretty hilarious. It might not actually require a lot of thought, but let's go with it. Ah yes, one with nothing. Discard your hand. Hmm. Now, if this was, if the, if you told me this was graceful charity, arguably, but you'd still have something left. So, hmm. <laughs> now, does being no discard isn't destroy. So the dark thing you told me earlier about preventing your monsters' destruction does not work with this. If it did work, if your monsters can't be destroyed uh, when you summon them, then this would be fucking busted. Um, I'm currently thinking of ways where this would be good. So, if you have something that triggers on discard, and your entire hand is full with it, hell yeah, why not? Like screw it. One with nothing. But the thought of just rem discarding your entire hand for nothing, <laughs> I don't see the payoff. <laughs> this looks like, at face value, without knowing magic, this looks so unimaginably bad. <laughs> uh, and so for some reason, we, we come back to Dark Worlds. The only thing that I would <laughs> see this have any form of value in is a Dark World type tutor effect. I, I think Magic calls it tutoring, right? Yes. I've seen your videos. Yes, tutoring. The uh, uh, Where on this card, you get something more of equal or better value to your hand. Um, Dark World has it with uh, Ding. Uh, I, pr I play Dark World for fun so many times, and if it comes to it, I forget all the names. I am sorry, Dark World fans. If there are any of you here. Pretty rare. So, no. <laughs> Simply, no. Uh, in a vacuum, not knowing if there is anything good to come of this, unless your opponent can load your hand with cards that uh, say, okay, at the, end of your at the end of your turn, if this is in your hand, I don't know, be forced to discard a card, and you choose the big red button option of, well, if I can't have any one of my cards at random, I'd rather have none of them, this card included. Yep. Gone. Then I'd see it as a very funny thing to play at locals, <laughs> because if if you're like, if your opponent's there like with obnoxious deck number twenty seven and it's like, how what do we do now? You can't use anything in in my hand. Well, if I can't use my hand, gone with it. That it, but it's it would be still very bad. Okay, final answer. It's bad. Final answer. Head empty. Um. This card is banned. Oh shit! No, it's not. <laughs> it's it's ter okay. it's terrible. <laughs> I was about to I was about to say so. There is dark worlds in magic. <laughs> no, no, no. This card is awful. It is basically a meme, and um, I, I there is something called madness. It's a mechanic that mm -hmm. works. If you discard, like if you discard this card, you can pay its madness cost, and then you can play mm -hmm. it for its madness cost. Or has some other ability if if you trigger madness, which is mm -hmm. the only thing you have to do is trigger to trigger madness is discard the card, kind of like Dark World. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. You could technically d use one with nothing to do that, 
but there are much better cards than one with nothing that do that. There's cards in, in, in Magic like Faithless Looting, which is similar to a Graceful Charity. Mm -hmm. um, that yep. card is that card is banned in one of the, in in a format because it's so good, like Graceful I would Charity. Imagine. Right, right. It, it 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 says draw two, discard two, but it's not draw mm -hmm. three, discard two like Graceful Charity is. But it's still um, way better to have to trigger your Madness cards than one with nothing. So yeah. yes, it could be a cheeky Definitely way of because... of your opponent using grief on you, and then you saying, you know what, you can't discard my hand if I discard everything in my hand, <laughs> and then discard this in response. Yeah. Oh my gosh, it's like you can't fire me, I quit. <laughs> Basically, oh, you can't quit, you're fired. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. You can't quit, you're fired. But anyway, uh, that's that's all I have for you today. Thank you for hanging out um, for this this thought experiment. And uh, uh, what do you think about magic well, cards so far? Very silly. Yes, that's pretty silly. So, There's a lot of things you can do. Some of them, yeah, some of them really, really cool. Like, I really like the uh, like the thought of Garbelchel just being essentially just a wave motion cannon on crack. Yes. This is like, I'm having to wait multiple turns. No, I'll do it just right now. Yep. And just killing your opponent with that. But one with nothing is... The fact that sort of called before I've seen is like head empty. <laughs> yes, I, 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 want, like, I wanted what? to show you kind of like the diversity of cards that you can get in mm -hmm. Magic, like with pack rat being a creature that can make copies of itself, with omniscience basically letting you play Yu-Gi-Oh. Um, mm -hmm. One with nothing have a completely irrelevant, really bad effect. Um, I wanted to give you kind of diversity with Magic cards, and if you come back on the show sometime, we can we can um, do like a a card for every color of mana, like white, a, a white, blue, black, red, and green card, and using oh, how, yeah, really how each color works. But anyway, if you like this and you want to see more Yu-Gi-Oh! players rate Magic the Gathering cards, let me know down in the comments, or are there any Magic cards that you want to see th that you want to see on the show? Go ahead and let me know if there's some Magic cards that you really want someone to rate and see if they're good or bad. Also, I'm revamping my Patreon, so if you want to be on the show, uh, just like Ignis Kid, you can be on the show, whether it's for Magic or Yu-Gi-Oh! or any other card game like Pokemon or Hearthstone. Um, join my Patreon. I will have different uh, different uh, settings that you can that you can use to be first in line to be on the show yourself if you if that's something that you would like to do. Anyway, hope you had a good time, Ignis Kid. I'll see you next time. So like the video if you liked it. Subscribe to the channel if you want to see more stuff like this. And we will see you next time. Peace. Goodbye.